After an email exchange, Matt from the Quantum of Conscience channel asked that I put my opinion in a video format. This opinion is a response to his video entitled Wanting Us to Notice or Censorship, Which Is It? I will start off this exposition by stating that I agree with Matt's view on this, and what I have to say is a compliment to complete it and not to replace or refute it. So let's get to it. Since 2001, even though preparations for this had been long coming for decades, the system has been performing a step-by-step, degree-by-degree initiation on those of us who can see, as Matt puts it in his X-Men analogy, the mutants. So 9-11 was the initial trigger for the initiation, and uh, many really began their full-fledged journey into truthing or conspiracy there. Even those who had begun earlier looking into these things were now able to join a bandwagon that had a lot more people than ever before, a, a true community, let's say. From all those who did, only a portion have the capacity to see through, the mix of courage, determination, creativity, brightness and mind sight, so to speak, that Matt describes in his work. That is, only a, per a portion had the ability to see the reality few can see. And so this gradual process was a mean to filter those who do from those who don't. Why 2001, you might ask? Well, there may be several other reasons as well that there is uh, no need to get into at this point. But the main one is that only in 2001 was the internet fully prepared for this at a worldwide level. The process of initiation they set up uh, required a massive worldwide network to be spread, and 2001 was when the internet really reached an acceptable level with ADSL broadband, for example, which was essential for the sharing and dissemination of lengthy video and audio. Now, in this degree-based initiation, the system gradually implemented steps that went deeper and deeper into the mysteries of reality. Even within a single event, several degrees were implemented or allowed to emerge to be able to filter the seers from the others. Using 9-11 to explain what I mean by this, at a novice level would be the political reality angle. For example, 9-11 was an inside job. Then you would get an intermediary level, which would be the political and perception manipulation angle. For example, 9-11 was an inside job and the buildings were demolished instead of uh, being brought down by the planes that hit them. After that, you would have the advanced level, which would be the political, perception manipulation and reality illusionism angle. For example, 9-11 was an inside job the buildings were brought down somehow, and no planes hit them. These uh, three degrees of the initiation that went on within that single 9-11 event are mere examples to explain the point, for there are several other sub-aspects of it that were also used as further sub-degrees, and there are many more complex intricacies as well to these sub-stories, but that is not important to the matter at hand right now. Now, expanding on um, this in relation to the subsequent events and subjects that gradually emerged since then, we can also see the same general pattern of degree-by-degree degree initiation to filter those who are able to proceed seeking what reality is from those who get stuck at a particular level. At novice levels, one could find 9-11 itself, then one of the next degrees would be perhaps the worldwide money and banking scam, then at the next level maybe all sorts of false flags and specifically for Americans threats to constitution, JFK, etc. All of these are based on material reality, so to speak. That is, the view that reality is an organic thing that is absolutely external and that is what and that it was in that sense uh, externally manipulated. At an intermediate, intermediate level, 
one began to see a mix of material with mental or psychological reality aspects, such as, at, a, at one level, Frankfurt School-style Marxist subversion. At another following level, perhaps, MKUltra type of brainwashing and Manchurian candidates, and how it takes from and relates with modern uh, marketing. And at a further level, perhaps, fake and staged events. So this intermediate level still required a organic reality that stood by itself, but it required also the perception of the psychological elements that influence how that reality is experienced. Then at more advanced levels, one could see that reality no longer required solidity and that mind subversion was all that was actually required. So there, at one level, we could have the magic rituals and symbolism being thrown at our psyches, for example. At the next level, one could have the perception that language itself is a code to do magic, that is, to influence reality. And then at the next level, one could get to the conclusion that reality isn't solid, or organic, and that it is a kind of input-output system that we all share. Again, I note, in the study of a single subject, there will also be subdivisions of several degrees of perception, interpretation, and seeking. The idea of this process was to get to the mutants, using Matt's analogy and terminology, to see how many were able to really proceed and advance to the next more advanced levels of reality perception. Yet what is the purpose behind finding those who can get to the advanced levels? Is it to kill them off? It could also be, but that is not profitable enough for them. My contemplation brought me to the opinion that the idea is recruitment, first and foremost, and then, if that fails, yes, disabling by whatever means. In a sense, we are Luke Skywalker, a prodigy like his fallen father that became Vader. Now, the Emperor in The Empire Strikes Back first wanted to kill Luke to eliminate the threat it could pose. Vader, however, convinced him that to recruit him was best, since he was powerful enough to ensure the next stage of the Empire would have a higher degree of power available to it. At a lower degree, we already saw the same machination in place, for example, in the hippie movements of the 60s and 70s. In the 60s, CIA and military operatives and relatives started bands and so-called spiritual movements that suddenly boomed into the youth culture of the time, generating a horde of what is denominated as hippies. Now, among all those hippies, some were just there by, be by peer pressure. I was going to say beer pressure <laughs> because it was what everyone else did. But others were really discovering that reality isn't what they were taught, that they were not what they thought they were, and so on. So these were really, truly there for the discovery. These advanced in the levels of the hippie scale, so to speak, and came to the point of a decision either get washed away by the counterattack of the empire or get recruited into it. How many music industry big labels had ex hippies among them? How many big business corporations? Note that I am not talking about a formal recruitment, such as someone approaching them and offering them a deal. Not at all. I am talking about having a door opening for them, tempting them and allowing them to make that decision. Mm -hmm. Then, they hope, Stockholm Syndrome kicks in, and they will join what they preached against previously. You see, to find out that reality is false, in all its aspects and intricacies, and even to understand that there is a truth out there somewhere, yes, X-Files spun here, does not protect ourselves from temptation in that reality. Does not. This is very important to understand. Because at the same time that we dig deeper and find more and more how reality is false, we are also, at the same time, being tortured, tormented, and being worn out, if we aren't careful and mindful. That torment will play against us when faced with the open door that leads to integration into the empire or system, because it shows us a way to relief. And taking that relief will make you love your tormentor. 
Remember 1984, the novel? Winston discovered that the reality portrayed by the ruling system was false and started exploring deeper. Then he was discovered and tortured until, when provided with relief, he became a supporter of it, loving Big Brother. But that is not all, because Winston was not one of those who can see. He was part of those who got stuck somewhere. O'Brien, his torturer, was, however. He shows and admits on several occasions that he knows and even brags about how reality is whatever they want it to be. And how would a person like O'Brien ever join the party and enforce it in such a way? Someone opened the door for him, and he crossed it, much in the same manner as I am postulating that they do for those of us who they may see as powerful enough to serve the system, even if informally. So their objective is to make us all into a sort of O'Brien, torturing all the Winstons that we scoffed at for being blind and stupid. The system's religion is the worship of itself, the nightmare of many levels. At a baser level, nature, which is little more than an arena in which constant conflict is rampant, even without humanity being involved. A constant flight or fight, uh, um, eat or be food, uh, run or die. And then there are uh, progressive other higher levels uh, to that fantasy, all the way to the level of both so-called God that proclaims ownership and authorship over it all, demanding obedience and strict discipline, and the so-called devil that proclaims that God is unjust and that he knows what man needs and wants best, away from all the discipline. Is it clear that both these two, so-called God and so-called devil, are actually the same shadow divided? One represents good within the system, the other represents evil within the system, yet both are part of the fantasy and actually they are fantasy enforcers, for none of them point to truth, ineffable as it is. None of them are true good, Both are different aspects of falsehood. So, Matt, this is my contemplation on that question. I will just finish by reiterating a few points that are essential to be understood, as follows. Number one, just knowing does not guard you from temptations. Knowing gives responsibility. So be alert to yourself and realize your most internal temptation vulnerabilities so that you can be better prepared. Number two, fear is the mind killer, truly, and in this case, also truth killer, as it moves one deeper into the senses of the system and so makes us more vulnerable to it. Avoid, therefore, making a decision based on fear or motivated by fear. Number three, if it speaks to you, even inside your mind, it is not true. Nothing of what we talk about here or elsewhere is ever truth in its absolute sense, because it is impossible to use language and still represent truth. It may point in its general direction, but it will never be it or define it. So I repeat what I said in other videos because it is so important. Truth speaks no words.